was filled with his praises. A little bit.
forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned I'm alive and well the spirit lives within me because you died and rose again I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted Pastor Norm's house. Uh, happy Monday, Thursday. We are in the Holy Week and we're celebrating uh, Monday, Thursday today in a different way. And so we came over to Pastor Norm's house to uh, hear from him a little devotion and kind of hear his heart on what Monday, Thursday means to him and that, what it's meant to Madison over the years. I want to encourage you right now just to go uh, find some communion supplies. We will be taking communion at the end. And so whatever you can find, find some juice, find some bread. 
whatever you can, just something for a cup and something for bread, and we'll take communion as we get to the end. But uh, right now, I just want to uh, turn it over to Pastor Norm and, and share a little bit what God's been putting on your heart. Okay, why don't we uh, uh, start with a word of prayer. We welcome you this evening, uh, this special day for uh, we Christians, and uh, let's have a word of prayer together. Amen. Father, we just come before you tonight knowing that many years ago on a night just like this, the agony and, and all that was going to be taking place over the next hours would be far beyond anything we could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And yet, from the very beginning of time, as God, as the Son of God and the Holy Spirit of God got together, this was in the plan of God. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, we ask now that you help us to understand a little bit more the cost, a little bit more about why we celebrate communion or the Lord's Supper. And we ask that you bless our time together and we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Monday, Thursday was a new uh, idea for me. I was a youth pastor at the First Baptist Church of Anaheim, California. And as a typical uh, Baptist, we didn't celebrate a Thursday service. It was always uh, Good Friday or Easter, and we would come together on those times. But in at Anaheim, the church celebrated Monday Thursday, and I didn't. I didn't know what in the world it was. Had my first service with them, and it has become a very favorite service of mine now, and I look forward to celebrating that. It's not one of the uh, most up services. It's a very difficult service uh, when we remember what Christ gave for us. We're going to be using for our text Luke chapter 22 and some verses out of John 13. You'll remember in John 13, this is when Jesus made arrangements for the Passover and as a part of it, he washed the feet of the disciples. And of course, Peter, uh, he didn't want him washing his feet. He said, no, 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 I, I should wash your feet. And Jesus said, unless you let me do this, he said, you're not going to understand what this is all about. And what he was saying was, you're not going to understand service and commitment and communion. And so... Uh, he talked about this, and then at the very end, in verses 34 and 35, Jesus says something that we still repeat today, and we know for truth, and it's found in the 13th chapter, in verse 34 and 35, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I loved you, and I'll, you have also loved one another. And by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Amen. The word Monday Thursday comes from a Latin word which means a new commandment. And this night, we got a commandment to love one another, a commandment to serve, and the third commandment was, I'm going to give you a new commandment, and that is what we call communion, or the Lord's Supper. So that's what Monday Thursday is. It's the gathering of Christians to remember what Jesus did, and it comes from the Jewish Seder or Passover. So let's go to chapter 22 of Luke very quickly, and it says this, And now the feast of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was approaching. And the chief priests and scribes were seeking how they might put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. And Satan entered into Judas, who was called Iscariot, belonging to the number of the twelve. He went away, and he discussed with the chief priests and officers how he might betray them, him to them. And they were glad and agreed with him for money. And he consented, and he began seeking the opportunity to betray him as a part, as he apart from the multitude. One interesting thing, and this is uh, my two cents here, 
I don't think in the beginning Judas Iscariot thought they were going to kill him. Mm -hmm. I think they thought he was going to be beaten up and everything. Mm -hmm. I can't prove that. But just from other evidence that I've read, Judas made one of the most terrible mistakes of his life. And you know how it ended with him taking his own life. And now what we're going to study is what we study or what we know now as Monday, Thursday. It's also part of the Jewish Passover. Then came the first day of unleavened bread in which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. He sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat it. And he, they said, well, where do you want us to prepare it? And he said, behold, you're going to enter the city and a man carrying a pitcher of water Follow him to the house that he enters, and you shall say to the owner of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? This gives me an indication that Jesus had already made these arrangements and now sent the disciples. He will show you a large furnished upper room, prepare it there. And they departed and found everything just as he told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour had come, they reclined at the table with him. And he said, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover before I suffer. I say to you, I shall never again eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken the cup and given thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after he had eaten, saying, This cup is poured out for you is a new covenant in my blood. Now, again... This was something brand new. They were used to the Passover. Uh, they were used to coming together and having uh, the food and the different vegetable things. They were used to all of this. They were used to having a, an uptime because they were celebrating how God had delivered Israel hundreds of years before. Every year they celebrated. But there was something different about this Thursday night. It was much more solemn. It was much calmer. There was an error in the air that uh, had not been there before, at least in my understanding. And so as they ate together and everything, instead of taking what's known as the third cup of the Passover feast, Jesus said, I have a new commandment, a new covenant. I'm going to do something different. Mm -hmm. And at this point, he took the cup and he made the comment. He said, this cup is going to represent my blood. And in just a moment, Pastor Brian is going to lead us in communion. And he said, this cup is a new covenant. It is a blood covenant. Blood has always been a part of forgiveness. They didn't comprehend exactly what he was saying. But they listened to what he said. And then it says he took bread. And when he broke the bread, he said, this is going to represent my body, which is broken for you. When you take this cup and you eat this bread, do it in remembrance of me. Now, interesting enough, this actually became at every meal. When you took bread and you took the cup, remember what Jesus Christ did on this night we call Monday Thursday. Well, we take communion uh, maybe once a week. Uh, some people take it once a month. It isn't how often, but it is what communion means. It is the gift of God. It is representing the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, when we come together tonight and we do what we're going to do, when we break the cracker, the bread, 
uh, a Cheerio, whatever it is that you have, we're remembering that Jesus Christ gave his body, and you know that beginning on Friday, his body was just absolutely uh, beaten, he was brutalized, he was spit upon, he was yelled at, and yet he took it. And he said, my body will be broken. And then taking the cup, he said, this covenant, this new covenant is a covenant I'm making with you that by the shedding of my blood on Calvary, you can have a new relationship with me and with God. And so Monday, Thursday is an exciting time, but it's a tough time because I look at what my Jesus did for me and for you and for all of us. And if we believe and trust in him and receive this gift of God, this new commandment, we are his children and we gather. And tonight, people are gathering all around the world and gathering tomorrow. And we're looking forward to what then comes Sunday because it didn't end here. This was only the beginning of victory. So I encourage you to examine yourself. I'm going to ask Pastor Brian now to uh, lead us in further scripture. And then uh, he and I together will share communion. And we want you to share with us. So uh, Pastor Brian, I turn it over to you. Oh, thank you so much, Pastor Norm. Uh, you know, as he was talking, I was thinking about just how uh, we celebrate this with a tradition of uh, 2,000 years of Christians who have been remembering what Jesus did for us. Uh, we're in the book of Mark as a church. I want to just read you that passage and then flip over to 1 Corinthians 11, but chapter 14, mm. uh, verse 22 in the book of Mark uh, says this, And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take this as my body. And he took a cup. And when he gave, had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, the eyewitness testimony of John, Pastor Norm already talked about, we read out of the book of Luke. Uh, this tradition has been passed down from the apostles to us. And uh, as we flip over to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, Paul uh, continues that, and it, he, he even has it in the language. He says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. So that also Paul here is getting what he received from, from these eyewitnesses. And as we take this communion, uh, we not only uh, connect ourselves with the body of Christ, uh, literally with Jesus uh, in a spiritual way, but also with uh, generations of Christians who have been taking communion. Yes. And as we uh, do that kind of over the internet in a virtual setting, it's, it, it feels different. But as we do that, we're still connected with Jesus. Uh, we're still connected with those that were, are in the same room with us tonight. Amen. Uh, but we're also connected with believers all around the world right. as we celebrate this. And right. so uh, I just want to encourage you with that. And so I'm going to read each little portion out of 1 Corinthians here, and then we'll say a, a prayer of blessing, and we'll share in the bread. So again, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and grab uh, some bread and, and grab a cup of something that you can remember what Jesus has done for us. And so again, it says uh, in verse 23 of chapter 11 in 1 Corinthians, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Mm. I want to just pray right now and just ask God's blessing over this bread. God, as we thank you for uh, your son, we thank you so much for Christ and for everything that he means to us and everything that he did for us. And as we think about his body being broken, uh, brutally tortured, and then put on a cross to die, as we even uh, notice that in our matzah bread, there's piercings, there's little holes in it that reminds us that his hands were pierced, his feet were pierced, his side was pierced mm. as he suffered for us. And all because he was exchanging his body for us, his life for us. 
And so, Father, as we take this bread today, we thank you so much for it. We pray that you would help us to uh, live that exchange life, that our lives would uh, be lived in honor and in glory of, of who Christ is and what he's done for us. Mm -hmm. And so we take this bread and we do it in remembrance of him. In Jesus' name. So I encourage you right now just to take a cracker and to take this bread in remembrance of Jesus. Do this in remembrance of him. He goes on in verse 25 and he says this, In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Yes. Pastor Norm, would you just pray a blessing over the cup as we prepare to take that? Father, we thank you for the blood of Christ that was shed for many. We thank you that we can remember once again today, as Pastor Brian said, not only right here, but throughout all who watch and throughout all the Christians who are saying, the blood of Christ has made me whole. Amen. And now do this in remembrance of him. Well, his life was given for us so that we could have life. Uh, I trust that you're experiencing the life of Christ, yeah, even in these difficult times. And so we want to just encourage you to stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more content coming out in different uh, creative ways to celebrate on this Holy Week, this Passion Week uh, that we celebrate Easter. So stay tuned for more. And uh, until we uh, get to see you in person, uh, we just pray that the Lord would bless you and keep yes. you and that we would be able to meet again soon. Amen. God bless you.